In this video, I'm going to introduce you to match defense and why it is the best way to play Madden in my personal opinion. Match coverage is essentially a third funnel or a third um, kind of pocket of defensive coverages and it combines man coverage and zone coverage uh, based off of what the defense or what the offense actually does with their routes what formation they're in and um, and I think it's really really powerful because there's some basic rules to the coverage that if you understand those rules it can really really help you become a better defensive player because the problem with man coverage is People can use picks and rubs. They can out leverage you in certain formations. The problem with spot drop zone coverage is very predictable. Um, they can just simply flood the zones. The beauty of match coverage is that kind of stuff doesn't always work. Now, again, obviously in any defense, you don't want to only run match. You don't want to only run man. You don't want to only run zone. You want to kind of merge everything together to become a good defensive player. However, match coverage is, I think, something that, at least at this point in, in Madden, as long as it's been in the game, there's still a lot of people that don't quite understand how it works, why it's important uh, to know how it works, and when to use certain coverages against certain formations. So I wanted to do kind of a video series here. We're going to do this over several couple couple weeks, hopefully, um, where we just show you how the coverage, the basics of the coverage, and how it works against certain formations. We're not going to get into all the adjustments and all that stuff. We're just going to show some of the basic principles. And then if you want to learn kind of the deep dive into match coverage, I have a full defensive ebook that I released in the first week the game was out that taught how I run my match defense. If I was going to run a match defense out of the big nickel over G formation, how I would run it. Big nickel over G, in my opinion, is probably one of the better formations to run match coverage out of. The formation we're going to talk about today is also a really good uh, formation to run match out of. Uh, but anyways, let's just go ahead and get into it. Match coverage is a split field. It's not not only match coverage, but like the, the, the match coverage that we're going to focus on is the cover four quarters, cover four palms, cover six, cover nine. Basically, the split field coverage uh, system uh, that match coverage really is. And it's a split field coverage. What that basically means is cover one hole and cover three. Those would be examples of a one high defense, right? You have a safety up top, and he is kind of the key to the whole entire defense. With split field coverage, safeties are still the key to your defense, but they are much, much more... Um, they're much, much more, um, you know, kind of individualized. They can kind of both, they both kind of come into play here for us. So what we want to do here is we're just going to come out in this dime two three six, which is a really, really good formation to run match coverage out of. Now, one quick pro tip: whether you're running zone match man coverage doesn't matter. You want zone coverage on match. The default zone coverage is really, really easy to bomb this year. It's really easy to manipulate. You want this on match, at least in my opinion, and I think the opinion of a lot of people. So the first coverage we're gonna go over is cover four quarters. Now, you'll see here that this is actually press quarters. We're gonna wanna back these guys off. This is gonna kinda make uh, this work a little bit more like we want it to. And I'm in the Diamond 236 in the Baltimore playbook. So the basic rules of match coverage is this. Cover four quarters is essentially known as, it's also known as robber coverage in a split field defense. What it basically means is the safeties are looking to rob the post of one. What's, what's one? Well, one means the number one receiver. And the way match coverage works is it's going to number the receivers from the outside in on one side of the field. The beauty of match coverage, in my opinion, is you could play match coverage on one side of the field and spot drop zone coverage on the other side of the field, and it wouldn't hurt the integrity of either coverage. And that's the beauty of this. So um, you'll take a look here. We're going to number the receivers from left or from the outside in. And then the center is where the cutoff point is. So um, Mike Evans, for example, would be the number one receiver to the left side of the formation. Russell Gage would be the number two receiver to the left side of the formation. The center here would then be obviously the divider. And so now we're on the right side. So Giovanni Bernard's gonna not be, he's not gonna be the number three receiver to the left. And he's also not gonna be the number one receiver to the right. When we look at the right side of the screen, Chris Godwin is the number one receiver. Kyle Rudolph is the number two receiver. And Giovanni Bernard is the number three receiver. Now, if Giovanni Bernard motions left, 
he becomes the number three receiver on the left side. So right or left, that's he's kind of the number three technically receiver in this formation. And the reality is, like, let's say he's in a, a trips like this. It changes things a little bit, uh, but because he would then be from outside in. He is now the number two receiver on that side, and Kyle Rudolph is the number three receiver. Okay? So that's kind of the basics of the numbering system in spread. Now, uh, let's say that we were playing somebody and they were running a formation that looked like this. This is no longer a two by two set. This is now what's known as a three by one set or trip set because there's three receivers to the left side of the field and there's one receiver to the right side of the field with a running back in the backfield. So this is the number one receiver. This is the number two receiver. Now this is the number three receiver on this side. And then if you come back over here, this guy is the number one receiver and this guy is the num technically the number two receiver. Okay, um, so that's kind of again just some basic principles of, of, of how um, you know how this formation works based off of motion and and all of that. So those are all things you need to know. There's rules. The rules of quarters is going to change depending on if they're in a three by one set or trips formation and if they're in a two by two set or twins formation. Okay, they're different rules based on the formation. Hopefully, these uh, videos will kind of help explain how the basic principles of the rules will work. Now, with that being said, I just wanted to go through here with you and kind of break this down. So like I said, cover four quarters, we're playing robber coverage. The safety is going to rob the post of one. What that basically means is they're, these guys straight across the board are responsible for their receivers in a vertical position, vertical route. So what is a vertical route? A vertical route is a route that is going to vertically stem at about probably seven yards seven eight yards so for example a drag is not a vertical route so like if i ran something like this where you have a, a vertical route to gauge and an under route to evans this corner on the left side is relating to number one if number one does not go vertical he's going to basically this quarter flat is going to give a smash call especially if this guy goes underneath, he's going to give a smash call and the quarter flat is now going to kind of help kind of carry this guy to the middle of the field and then pass him off to this guy. And then what's going to happen is this defender is supposed to basically play the smash or the deep corner route. So let me show you kind of how this works. You'll see here he goes under, you get the smash call and you get this really nice coverage on the corner route. Now, one other thing that I want to point out about this is what if the slot receiver doesn't run a, a corner, right? Even in a smash call scenario, what if the what if you get something like this? Okay, if you get something like this, if you watch this cornerback, let me back him off so that he's not uh, in a different principle. Maybe I don't know why he's not. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong wrong controller. Um, but what you'll see here is this. So you've got a, a route combo that looks kind of like this. So now if you watch this left side corner, there's no, there's not technically a smash call. So he's not, he doesn't have to take him across the field. Why would he not take him across the field? Because he's not, he's out leveraged to do so. He doesn't have leverage to take the player across the field. The player already has inside positioning. And that's the beauty of this. So now let me take, take you through kind of another scenario. Let's say that we get a route combination that looks like this where you get a drag from the number two and a streak from the number one receiver. So in this scenario, uh, now the safety, his man is not going vertical. And so his new job is to rob the post of one. But what if number one doesn't run a post? What if he runs an outside deep out, a deep fade, uh, something like that to the outside? Well, my corner has outside leverage, so there's no reason for the safety to help me right so the beauty of the coverage is it's always going to play with really good leverage based off of what routes you actually put on the field so let's say that we run something like this where we have this little whip route and then we have this like deep skinny post and what you'll see on the left side number two doesn't run a vertical i'm robbing the post to one. Oh, he does run a post now i'm in a really good position to rob and pick that off on that sideline or on that on that side of the field now, the last little piece of this puzzle is the quarter flat defender's three-rec hook defender. 
So the three rack hook defender, um, my personal advice when running a match coverage is to blitz, is to use this defender and blitz him and then drop one of your defensive linemen into a bluff blitz uh, because they'll still kind of play that responsibility. Now you're free uh, to use her however you want to. But basically the three rack hook defender, especially against two by two, is really looking for these underneath routes, these little underneath drags and stuff. There is one scenario where like if they, let's say they run something like, let's say they run something kind of like this, if you will, this is kind of a, a unique route combo, but the, the running back is number three receiver. If he does go on a vertical route, uh, sometimes this three rec will need to kind of monitor him, which is why you want to have your user kind of freed up. See here, this time we played it really, really well. So the quarter flight ends up playing the running back. But just kind of FYI, the running back is really, every formation has a problem receiver, a receiver that can cause the coverage problems uh, is what I've, I've kind of called it. Uh, and so what you want to do defensively is you want to say, okay, who's the problem receiver? In this example, it's a running back. So if the running back goes on a vertical, let's say he runs a wheel, let's say he runs a, a streak, you got to watch that and just make sure he's covered. If he's not covered, you need to go guard him. So like, let's say an example might be something like this, you know, something like this. You see here, boom, boom. Now the quarter flat plays really, really well. And I will say, like, the quarter flats are actually a really important piece of the coverage um, this year. They've actually improved them significantly in some of the patches. So basically what the quarter flat's responsibility is they're going to take first to the flat out and up. So, like, let's say that... Um, like let's say that your running back goes on a wheel and you run a route combo like this. The quarter flat will take him out and up and as you see right there. So you might be saying, okay, well what if we get like a mesh play? So let's say that they drag this guy, they post this guy, you know, and then they do something like this, okay? If you get something like this, watch the three rec, you'll see the three rec will carry the drag all the way across the formation. So that's the importance of a three rec is if those quarter flats get taken out of the sideline because of a wheel route because they're carrying a wheel route up and out, then you, then you have this three rec hook zone that is designed to carry like a shallow cross, for example. So let me show you that same route combination, except this time we're going to do one thing different. We're going to bluff blitz this defender and we're going to blitz this guy and pass commit. And what you'll see here is watch him carry. See how that defensive lineman will carry him? Now again, obviously you're going to have a little bit of better player in Mutt there, but um, you know, I think fast defensive tackles that can kind of, they don't have to be perfect in coverage, uh, but if they're decent, it's going to go a long way for your coverage. So that's just kind of a basic breakdown of how match coverage, cover four quarters specifically, works against spread formations. These are two by two sets. Generally speaking, this video will apply to any two by two set uh, where there's two receivers on either side. On either side, um, you know this also. For example, let me show you something else real quick. Quarters plays uh, again. I can't stress enough like the, pat, the 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 key of this being a split field coverage. So like, let's say that you are in strong slot and you're playing this coverage on the left side of the formation. That's a two by two set, right? On the right side of the formation, this is essentially a solo tight end or nub tight end set, kind of like you would see out of trips tight end. So this, these guys here are going to play this like they very similarly to how they would play a tight end uh, in trips tight end. So let's let me show you what I mean. So like let's say that they this this tight end right here is dragging across the field. What you should see here is the safety will actually kind of poach that drag. Now, in this example, we have the quarter flats, a um, little bit of a different nuance. But it, let's say that the let's say that the the tight end goes up on a corner route. The outside quarter is responsible for the tight end man to man on that outside corner. So as you see right here, he's going to play that corner route. So what's really nice about quarters is it really it does a good job of stopping corner routes. It, a lot of times, it really does a good job of also kind of, kind of combating route abilities uh, to a certain extent. But you'll see here, same thing. Like I said, on the left side, we are playing robber coverage. So if number two goes to the flat or he goes on an underneath route, then we're going to get a double team on this post. That's what's so powerful about this coverage. And so you can apply this to 
not only to spread sets, but you can apply it to any twin set in the game. That's how this is going to apply. So, anyways, this is just a basic introduction to match, kind of a, a little bit of an overview. Uh, and hopefully you enjoyed these videos. If you do, leave a like. And if you want to learn my entire match coverage defensive ebook, make sure you join our Patreon. It's only $10 to sign up, gets you access to everything, um, all of the ebooks and all the updates to those ebooks. And if you want to sign up, head down to the description below and click the link that I put down below.